Good evening. Our order of worship this evening is recorded on the service folder. You should have received as you came through the door. If you did not receive one of those, you can walk back there at your earliest convenience and pick one up um, from the cabinets there at the back of the church. We'll begin with the singing of our first hymn, Come My Soul with Every Care. If you're able, please stand. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in the darkness, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Father, I have sinned against you and am not worthy to be called your child. Yet in mercy you sacrificed your only Son to purge away all my guilt. For his sake, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and in the joy of your Holy Spirit, let me serve you all my days. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Upon this, your confession, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. the prayer of the day together. Teach us, O Lord, to delight in your law, to follow your decrees, and to walk in your paths. Turn our eyes away from worthless things and our hearts from willful sin, that we may know the sweetness of your word, the peace of your forgiveness, and the joy of the redeemed, both now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
As we turn our attention to our lessons this evening, you can find all of them recorded on the back of your weekly bulletins. As we read those lessons, we also note that the problems of this world are real and often bring with them real suffering as a result. The greatest of the problems, of course, remains sin, which clings to every one of us and for which we deserve an eternal punishment in hell. And yet, our God tells us that he takes our punishment on himself. He goes to the cross that we might look forward to an eternity in heaven. We can cast all of our cares on him. Our first lesson is recorded for us in the book of Joel, chapter 3. We read there verses 12 through 16. Let the nations be roused. Let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, trample the grapes, for the winepress is full and the vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will be darkened and the stars no longer shine. The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the sky will tremble. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. This is our first lesson. Our second lesson tonight is recorded for us in the book of Romans, chapter 8. We read there verses 26 and 27. It will also serve as the text for the sermon. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. This is our second lesson. Alleluia! My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire, and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Alleluia. Again, if you're able, please stand for the reading of our gospel lesson. This evening's gospel is recorded for us in the book of Matthew, chapter 13. We read their selected verses. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, 
and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out his kingdom everything that causes sin in all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the Gospel of the Lord. At this time, we'll join together in the Confession of Faith, which is the explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed, as it's printed at the top of page 3 in your service folders. I believe that God created me and all that exists, and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all I need to keep my body and life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger, guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. fellow Christians who love to speak to your Heavenly Father, grace and peace to you in the name of our Savior Jesus, through whom we have the right to speak to that Father. Amen. It was a blistering hot August day and a family invited some guests over for dinner. And the father asked his young son if he would say the prayer at the dinner table. And the little boy said, but I don't know what to say. And the father said, just say what you heard me say. So the little boy bowed his head and said, Oh Lord, why did we invite all these people over on such a hot day? (laughs) 
Sometimes I think we can relate to a young person like that because we also struggle with our lives of prayer. These words from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 actually tell us about the Holy Spirit's role in helping us in our prayer life. He's reminding us, yes, Christians, we can pray. We can pray. We know that we're going to have problems with our prayer life, but at the same time, we have the Holy Spirit who helps us through those problems so that we can continually bring those prayers to the Lord. So the Apostle Paul writes, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray. I think we'd all admit that we have our prayer problems. One of the problems that comes along with prayer is that we don't always use it as often as really we could be using it. It's kind of like having a hydraulic jack in the trunk of your car, and then you get a flat tire, and instead of using the hydraulic jack, you decide to try to lift the car up with your arms. God wants us to, to, to come to him. We have the power of the creator of the universe at our disposal, and yet so often we try to handle matters by ourselves because we think that we can do it. One of the things that we often do is that we take it out of God's hands, we don't go to him in prayer, and then we complain that God isn't there when we need him. So God says, come to me with these, with these prayers. It's a gift that I've given to you. This is what James wrote. You do not have because you do not ask God. A second problem that we have with prayer can sometimes be best summarized by this sailor's adage, once on shore, we pray no more. In other words, we pray a lot when we're in big trouble, but we kind of forget about it when things smooth out, when they're not going badly anymore for us. There's a story I read about three Christians who were talking about the best way to pray, and one said the best way is to have your hands folded, and the second one said the best way is to have your eyes closed and your head bowed, and the third one said it's best to pray on your knees, and there was a telephone repairman who happened to be in the same room and overheard them and interjected, well, the best way I ever prayed was when I lost my balance in the bucket lift and fell out and I was hanging 40 feet above the ground upside down. I can just imagine that that man was pouring out his heart in prayer to the Lord at that time. Now, it's not wrong to go to the Lord in prayer when t times are filled with trouble for us. In fact, God even says, come to me. And he also says, Bring your, come, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. I will deliver you and you will honor me. However, praying only then really isn't enough in our lives, is it? There are so many things that we can pray about. We just sang about some of those things that, in the hymn that we just sang together. Actually, in the first article of the Apostles' Creed, think of all the things that God gives us that we can talk to him about in our lives of prayer, but not just for us, but for other people as well. And how about our local and national leaders? Don't they need a lot of prayers right now? I mean, complaining doesn't seem to change anything. How about going to the Lord in prayer? If every Christian did that on a daily basis, praying for our leaders. And how about those who are in law enforcement? What troubles they are going through right now. They and their families could use our prayers on a regular basis. So it's not just times of trouble for us but it's also times of need for others that we can include them in our prayers. A third problem area that is talked about actually right in this text is what Paul says here. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Sometimes we just don't know what it is that we should be praying for. And the best remedy for that is to go to the Word of God because that's where God's will is revealed to us. And the more we know his will, the more we'll be able to pray according to that will as well. Our own will, because of our sinful nature, is to pray or to think about only about ourselves, right? Me, myself, and I. But God is so different from us. He is altruistic. He is always thinking about how I can bring blessing and good and kindness and the, what's best for other people to them, to others as well. So as we know the will of God, we will pray more according to the will of God. We also have a tendency to pray especially for physical and temporal things rather than for spiritual things, but that's convoluted, isn't it? Think about the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us. There are seven petitions, seven requests. 
Of those seven requests, one of them has to do with physical things. That's give us this day our daily bread. And the rest has to do with the spiritual things in life that affect us, that affect others around us, that affect Christ's church in this world and the ultimate outcome of things. So I think that's informative, that's instructive, isn't it, as to how we can pattern our prayers after the prayer that our Savior Jesus taught us himself. And one more problem or obstacle to prayer is this, and that is the helter-skelter lifestyle that we lead. We dash from one place to the next. We barely ever slow down for things in life and especially slow down to take time to calmly, peacefully, and quietly pray to God and bring our requests to him. It really matters that we make the time so that we can take the time to pray. And we do that with things in life that are really a priority, right? When we really want something, know that we need to be doing something, we stop and we prioritize that. Once again, we have the creator of the universe the power of the one who created all things at our disposal, God says it's there for you. Bring it to me in prayer. So those are four of, I'm sure other problems as well could be included, but those are four of them, and here's what Paul reassures us with. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. The Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. So simply saying, this, the Holy Spirit is here to help you. The Holy Spirit is here to, to be with you and to help you in your time of prayer and to deal with these problems of prayer. First of all, the Holy Spirit gives us access to the Lord, right? We're sinful and God is holy and we have no right to speak to God. We have no reason to think that we should be able to approach him in prayer at all. But it's through Jesus, right, that our sins are forgiven, that we are made pure and holy in the sight of God, and the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us faith to trust in Jesus. And when that happens, when we are brought to faith and kept in that faith, the lines of communication to the Lord, to this God of the universe again, are completely open to us. They are wide open. And so he says, the Spirit intercedes for the saints. He's talking about you. I know you're too humble to say I'm a saint, but don't be, because that's what he's saying, is that you are saints. A saint is a holy one, somebody who has been declared perfect and righteous in the sight of God. And so the Spirit is there interceding on our behalf. He's speaking for us before the Lord. And that's why James says the prayer of a righteous person, in other words, the prayer of a saint, of a perfect person, that's you, is powerful and effective. The Holy Spirit also helps us pray when we are speechless. There are times in life when we are so overwhelmed with the circumstance or the situation in life that we can't even come up with the right words. It's like we just are dumbfounded at what has just happened in our life. And so Paul says, he reassures us, the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. We sigh when we're exhausted. We cry when we're filled with deep pain and grief. We cry when we're filled with joy. We gasp when we see a, a sunrise or a sunset that God has painted and don't even know what to say. It's so majestic. Well, God knows. God hears. Those prayers are arriving to him, <clears throat> to him even though we may not have the right words at the right time. There was a mother who was walking past the door of her little girl, her bedroom door, and she heard her daughter saying the alphabet in kind of a strangely odd way, kind of a quiet way. So she popped her head in the door and said, is everything okay? And the little girl said, well, I'm saying my prayers, Mom, but I can't really think of what to say, so I'm just saying the letters of the alphabet, and I know God will put them together because he knows what I'm trying to say. Out of the mouths of little children, some kind, times come the greatest most beautiful spiritual truths. So fellow Christians, yes, we can pray. Oh, we all have our problems with prayer, but we also have the Holy Spirit who lives and dwells inside of each of us. 
And that Holy Spirit helps us with all those prayer problems and overcomes them. Yes, Christians, we can and we will pray. Amen. Please remain seated. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue with him 412. It begins on the bottom of page 3. Please stand for prayer. Father, you have invited us to come to you with whatever is on our hearts, and you have promised to hear us for Jesus' sake. When we waver or hesitate to pray, strengthen our faith. Thank you for making your mighty power and caring love available to us at all times. By your word, increase our knowledge of your will and then move us to take all our needs and those of others to you in prayer. Frailties of body and soul plague us all. We ask you to watch over David Wiener, brother of Mark Wiener, who is undergoing treatment for leukemia. Help his doctors and make effective his medications that healing may take place. Comfort former member Joyce Woodruff, now a resident at Prairie Place in Ripon, and her children who are saddened at the death of husband and father, Watson Woodruff, on Thursday at the age of 89. Bless your children with confidence that you will never forsake them, and that through Jesus Christ we have the certain hope of eternal life where no troubles will ever exist. Lord of Nations, look with mercy on our country as we struggle with discord and civil unrest. Frustrate the plans of those who stir up violence and strife, and bless the efforts of those who promote harmony and peace. Help us as Christian citizens to reflect and express your truth and love in everything we say and do. Let the preaching of the gospel, which alone brings true peace in human hearts, be heard throughout our land. We commend into your care all who are unemployed and unable to find work. Keep them from frustration and bitterness and lead them to cast their cares on you. Help economic conditions to improve if it is your will. Bless our faculty as they prepare for the upcoming school year with all its uncertainties. Give them wisdom, stamina, and good health now and always. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace give you peace at all times and in every way. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We'll sing our final hymn, Abide, O Dearest Jesus.